everybody. Uh, my name is Christian, Christian Gitz and I'm uh, working at DC Square. Um, this talk today I will, I will talk about MQTT with Eclipse PAHO. So you already heard a little bit of MQTT stuff from my uh, yeah, two previous uh, speakers. So I will basically um, go into more detail where they didn't uh, have time to, to explain what MQTT is about. So first, um, yeah, who I am. Uh, if you, you want to reach me out to me, I'm, I'm on Twitter. So basically, I'm the CEO and co founder of TC Square. We are a company from southern Germany where we build uh, highly scalable solutions for. Okay. Where we build uh, highly scalable solutions for, for our customers with MQDT in the Internet of Things area. Um, we have in, uh, developed our own MQDT broker, which is called HiveMQ. I can talk about it this a little bit later. Uh, yeah, and we build solutions, uh, as I already said, for our customers, which uh, need high, uh, high scalable solutions from um, 10 clients to millions or uh, millions of clients. Um, I'm also an uh, author and speaker and do a lot of uh, uh, writing articles and speaking about MQDT and uh, other topics I'm, uh, I'm working on. And if I'm not uh, doing this, all this stuff, so then you can find me hiking in the in the Alps. So this was just a, a little introduction uh, that you have a view of, my, of what I what I do and what I uh, yeah what I do. So as as Benjamin uh, already already said, uh, the IoT the Internet of Things is happening now. So why why is the case? Basically, it's because of the the open hardware is available to us uh, at the moment. So the hardware is like Raspberry Pi or Arduino. The stuff is, is the very cheap. It is, 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 it is accessible to everybody. So everybody can afford it. It only costs a few bucks. And you can build very cool stuff with, this, with, with it. Um, another point is the devices uh, are really getting up, getting more and more. So I have only two statistics here. So um, the statistic <laughs> above is the number is the number of devices uh, in the years from 2003 to 2020, which rises up from, uh, oh, these this numbers are billions, so um, from uh, 0.5 billion to uh, 50, 50 billion devices, and uh, compare it to the number of people on the earth, this is really yeah, astonishing. And in 2020, we will have 6.5 6 devices per person, so everybody will have uh, like uh, around seven devices, even if they are not on themselves like mobile phones, but in the house or uh, they will, you will own this kind of devices. Another interesting statistic is that at, in 2020, each second there will be 250 new devices. So at the moment this, this number is around uh, 80, uh, around 80 devices. This will go up in 2020 to 250. So this is some interesting uh, stuff which uh, everybody we should really um, think about because with the open hardware and these numbers going up, the developers have a great power to create inventions and build stuff which uh, we will use in the future. So yeah, we basically heard this from, from uh, also Matteo and also think from Benjamin that we need a protocol to connect all these things because we have so many and there are different uh, use cases than we have now with the uh, web pages. So uh, we have HTTP, which we already I think everybody knows in this room, and it's an old protocol which um, involves with the internet itself. So HTTP isn't suitable for for IoT because yeah, it's it's basically it's too verbose. So it's also it's request response based. So you only every time you need data, you have to call uh, the server or, or and it's also, it's point to point, but the good thing about it, it's widely known. So this is why everybody is using it because it's, everybody's familiar with it and knows uh, uh, what it does and what it makes. So um, when I said HTTP is, is um, not suitable, so what, would, what are the, there are some challenges in, in, uh, in a space around IoT and the connect the hardware devices um, with um, with the internet, so there are definitely some challenges that has to be solved be, um, before we can we can do this. So I just listed some of them. 
um, which is we have constrained devices, so the devices are very small. Um, we have bi we need bidirectional communication, so it's not an option to install a HTTP server on a device just to communicate with it with HTTP. Um, we need scalability, so we need to scale from <coughs> 10 devices to millions of devices. Um, we have unreliable net networks, like mobile, mobile network is definitely unreliable. So we need, to, we need to deal with that, so that messages are not getting dropped or um, getting lost uh, on the way to the device or to the server. Um, and uh, important point, we need push messaging. So it's, it's uh, all HTTP is, is polling, or long polling, and there are some workarounds it, but we need true push communication that we, we get the data that is uh, has on the devices, and we need the data when it's when it's when it's uh, yeah measured there, and not like ten sec seconds later. So this is also um, a very important point. Another important point is also uh, security. So we have the sensitive data, and also so I'm from Germany. There is it's really concerned a lot of concern and also in other countries about security of, of this stuff because if, if there is only a temperature value for example is not so maybe not so uh, yeah sensible but you have your other data where different things uh, the GPS location of different things it could be or it c can be very sensible and also uh, person specific data that you won't be uh, yeah sent over the wire um, in clear text so you need definitely need security and there are a lot of more challenges with which um, introducing in the in the IoT because there is um, yes these hardware devices we are, can now build meets the software so there's a big a big challenge to bring these two worlds together and, and make them work together so um, this is to to the challenges we have and now I want to talk about why MTD is a good fit it's, I don't say it's the the uh, best protocol, uh, but it's a good fit for for uh, some uh, for use cases in, in this area, and it provides um, a lot of a lot of things that make these challenges solve these challenges or make it make it or a good way to it. So, with MQTT you can you can solve uh, some of these challenges. So, basically, what we also uh, heard from from Matteo um, that. This, this is a paradigm shift again uh, against HTTP where we have rec request response. So this, this pattern is called publish subscribe and I just want to give you a brief introduction because you already heard that. So you can think about it if you, you have everybody, I'm not sure at the moment, but like 10 years ago everybody had uh, uh, newspapers. So you subscribe to a newspaper company and say, hey, I want to have a newspaper. So you sign some kind of contract. Um, and then if the contract is signed, and every day in the morning, you will get uh, a newspaper delivered. So this is published to you, to your to your mailbox. So it's the same same uh, kind for for things. So no, he, only here you have an MQTT broker in the middle, and you have uh, on the left a temperature sensor, and on the right you have a, a mobile phone or a laptop or, or anything else. And these th these things subscribe to the broker on a speci specific topic, which I will explain in a little bit. And as soon as the temperature sensor uh, has a new value, it will send them to to the subscribed clients. And you can also subscribe to very specific uh, data that you don't get all data which is published on that broker. So, um, for example, the topics the topics is like a hi hierarchical uh, hierarchy of like a URL. So, for example, you have Italy, you have Florence. And you have uh, a people count and a temperature sensor in each of this, uh, each of the city, uh, Florence and Milan. And you have we have a, a temperature sensor. So now this is our our data that we have we have uh, we have we have measured. So now if we we subscribe to a topic Italy, Florence, and temperature, we only get the temperature val value from one sense from this sensor. So there is another um, uh, possibility. To to do uh, um, yeah a little bit more uh, interesting subscriptions, you can also subscribe to wildcards. So this is if you use the the plus operator, um, then you can um, subscribe to this hierarchy for uh, this whole hierarchy. It will enable you 
to get both temperature values from, from Milan and from Florence. And also there is uh, the, yeah, the, the uh, more, a more big, um, bigger Valka, which is the, uh, which will uh, include everything underneath. So if, if there would be more, more, uh, more hierarchies under here, you would subscribe to, to everything uh, which is down there. This is also, if you can also use this one without topics, only the, the wild card, and then you get everything. But which is definitely not, uh, not an option you should use if you have a lot of data, because uh, the client should only subscribe to the data that they need. So this is a pattern to, to, uh, yeah, to, to uh, get the data to this clients that need it, and the other ones will only get theirs. So this is not getting everything, and then on a client you, can, you, you would, um, you would uh, uh, filter which one is for you, so the broker only sends you with the topics, only sends you the data you really need. Okay, so here uh, a few facts about MQTT so that are, I think they are interesting. So MQTT is like, I think we heard already, is based on top of TCP. The TCP brings the ri reliability uh, into, into place, uh, but there are some reliability features on top of that, so I will talk about, uh, I think, in the next slide. Um, it is designed for unreliable networks, so where t some, there are cases where TCP is not, not enough, so this will also be handled. Um, MQT is very simple, so there are only, uh, um, I think, uh, five or six uh, um, commands that can be that are, can be sent. Like one is publish, one is subscribe, and then connect, disconnect, and yeah, it's it's also um, where it's data agnostic. That means it's you can send uh, any kind of data structure over, over MQT if it's a it's a picture or uh, or just a uh, or just um, yeah some. Uh, JSON data or some only a value. If a sensor only sends one, uh, one value, this is totally data agnostic. It's a binary protocol, so data would be encoded in binary. So this also has uh, minimal overhead. It's designed for minimal overhead. We will also talk about the history in a little bit. So and it has the publish subscribe architecture, which I already talked about. Okay, so. Now a uh, quick, quick uh, jump to, uh, back to 1999, where MQTT was invented uh, uh, from Andy Stanford Clark and Oral Nipper. Um, uh, back then they were working at uh, Arcom and, uh, and uh, IBM. So they invented the protocol for, for uh, surveillance of, of a pipeline which goes through the, through the desert, and they had to communicate over satellite link uh, which is very was very expensive, or is still very expensive. So they had to to invent a protocol which um, has these characteristics MQT now has, and they used it. Uh, so IBM internally used it for yeah around around 10 years, and then they, in 2010 they made it royalty free, so everybody else could uh, could use it, and they also uh, open sourced a lot of the uh, software they used internally. Um, yeah, and then 2013. Uh, the t uh, TC, the Technical com Committee, uh, formed at OASIS. Um, that is, OASIS is a standardization, standardization organization which uh, will, or is nearly at the end of standardizing MQT. So this will be a standard, standard by, I think, July or August this year. So, um, what are now the uh, concrete use cases where you can, it makes sense to use MQT? So, when you need uh, uh, push communication, when you need a minimal bandwidth, so that you you know that you're you may be on a mobile network and you have a, only a one a, a megabyte plan uh, from your mobile carrier, then it's probably best to use uh, MQT over over HTTP. Um, if you have a, a low latency, I think that goes with, with it. Um, if you have if if you have a build application that it's maybe for an enterprise and you have uh, mobile clients want to connect to it. So that's uh, a good fit. It's also for, also for constraint devices because it's, yeah, clients are simple to, to implement. And unreliable networks because there are also mechanisms which I think we, yeah, which we will talk about now. So what are the features to make these use cases work? Um, first, of, first of all, there is the quality of service, which is basically one, 
uh, uh, very central point of MQTT where it does uh, a lot of stuff which normally you have to do by yourself. So there are, yeah, there are three quality of service levels. So quality of service one mean, uh, nil, uh, zero means that you just send the message to the broker. And then if the message gets lost, then it's, uh, yeah, it's lost. So it's like fire and forget. Um, as a quality of service one is, you send the message uh, and you wait for a response. So if then the response gets dropped, um, the device will send the message again, and this means the message will, uh, yeah, will arrive uh, maybe one uh, at least once, but can also be uh, uh, will also be arrived more if you if if the, the acknowledge uh, gets gets lost. So and quality of service two is the the best the best level you can have. It also comes with more overhead, of course, but this will make sure the message arrives only once. So if it's business critical for your application that a message only arrives once because otherwise something would get damaged, then you should uh, use quality of service too. But and so this can be adjusted uh, for every message that is sent. Um, yeah, other other features I already talked about: the topic wildcards, so you can very specifically um, um, uh, say what data you you want to get. Also, another interesting concept is retained messages. So if you send a message on a certain topic and you send the retain flag, I will also show, show this later in the demo, um, then this last message gets stored. So you have a mechanism to store the last good value. So this allows you, maybe we have the topic from before, like uh, Italy, Florence, temperature, and if the message is retained, then the next client which will connect will get the last message, the last temperature value. So this helps you. Um, if the, maybe the interval of the sensor is like 10 minutes or, or five minutes, and the application will connect between these intervals, and it's also getting a, a value that doesn't have to wait until the sensor publishes the next, next value. Also a very neat concept is the last will and testament, which often you have devices out in the wild which you don't have access to, only remote access, and if this, this device dies, um, then you, have, you don't know uh, if it's, if it's if it has died or wha what's going on there. So with the content of the MQT broker, you can send on a connect, you can send uh, the last will and a testament, which is uh, MQT message that will be sent by the broker on the disconnect of the client. So when if you, if you have the device and the device is going offline, the broker is recognizing that the device is offline, and then it sends uh, a last will message to a topic which the client has specified at his, uh, when, he's, when he connected. Um, another important thing for constraint devices are the persistent sessions. So this means uh, we have devices have subscriptions, and when they connect to a broker, they say, okay, hey broker, my subscriptions are this, what, this one, this one, this one. So with the persistent sessions, the broker stores um, these on, on, stores them, and you don't have to the connect uh, is going is then automati automatically there, and you have the session uh, there, and you also will will get messages delivered that which are uh, published when you were offline. So when you send messages on quality of service one and two, uh, and you have a persistent session, then the broker will store all the messages and send them to you to the device that's getting ba back online. And to make all these things work, uh, MQT has heartbeats, so you can configure for each each, each device. Um, when the heartbeat will uh, uh, will be will be established with the broker, and so it could, uh, if it's a mobile network, it could be a longer heartbeat because the the, um, the network may, m might be slower. And for if you collect it by by a network cable, then the heartbeat could be could be uh, shorter. So that, that to, the, to the features, I already talked about the quality of service levels, um, and also a, a very neat feature is. <coughs> like we also already heard is MQTT uh, over web sockets. So this one uh, allows us to bring every web browser is the, with that MQTT device. So that uh, offers a lot of possibilities to, to bring live data to the, to the web. You also can, um, you can also talk, uh, the device can talk to web, your web browser and backwards. And also this offers uh, possibilities to detect um, if the user closes the web browser, because if we use last will and testament, 
on that, then we can already take the web browser. I'm not sure if there is already a uh, yes um, uh, interesting use case for that, but it's a cool cool thing that you can detect if the user closes the web browser. <laughs> but that, that's only that's the case because in our web sockets, whole MQTT stack is available. So the quality of service levels, um, the persistent sessions, everything is there, um, and you can use that. And that's that's very cool. So with that all about the protocol, we I will talk about uh, use cases. So where it's uh, actually used. Um, first of all, is a very big uh, a big uh, user of the protocol is is Facebook. Facebook uses it for their messenger for Facebook Messenger, um, and yeah, for for uh, publishing and sending the messages. And also, IBM has invented it for the pipelines, so that you could monitor pipelines uh, through the desktop. Um, other use cases are uh, smart home, so the temperature values and uh, other things are published to the cloud, uh, and you can um, control your home from from your device, not only fr from from remote places. Also, a lot of buzz is going uh, around on on, uh, on on the internet about connected cars, so MQTT is uh, used in uh, connected car environments, and also there are some use cases in healthcare. Okay, so now I talked about the, what the protocol is about, and now we will go into the uh, uh, implementations. So there we have, at Eclipse, we have a Mosquito, which, which is open source. It's written in uh, C, um, and it's ideal for running it on constrained devices. So if you maybe would have, in a, in a smart home scenario, you would have a broker maybe in the home, so you could run Mosquito on a very, uh, a very uh, small device if you want. It also supports uh, bridging, which is, which is basically sending the messages um, from one topic to another MQTT broker, which is a quite neat feature if you have a hierarchy of, of MQTT brokers. Then also, uh, yeah, we have HiveMQ, which is which we um, developed because we saw there is a there is a gap for a high performance uh, MQTT broker, which is developed for for security scalability from the ground up. So this one is, is based on Java. Uh, we have native WebSocket support because with Mosquito you have to use some uh, some external HTTP server to translate the WebSocket uh, frames to MQTT, which is built in with HiveMQ. Uh, we also have clustering, so for high availability or high scalability, you could use more nodes which are talking to each other and sharing the, their state. Um, it has an open plugin system, so everybody can can write on plugins and intercept uh, messages. For example, you could write every published <coughs> messages that is coming in right to database, or do custom identification or authentication, which can be done by plugins. It's also it's uh, open source, so MQ can can be used uh, uh, with uh, 20 25 devices for free. Uh, and we also support uh, bridging in the newest version, and yeah. That, that's basically what we're doing. Our our approach is to to, to have the, old, the whole thing um, very customizable, so that you can build uh, your own plugins that do custom stuff and only doing the MQTT in, in the core itself. So there are a lot of other brokers as well. So it would be a very long list to all talk about all of them. But here we also mentioned uh, the Moscow broker, which is developed, I think, by him. Uh, and there are also ActiveMQ and RabbitMQ, which are basically uh, more more traditional message message queuing <coughs> system, which support MQTT. Yeah, not all of the features, but they support the basic protocol. So I think ActiveMQ is not supporting a quality of service higher than one or two, but I'm, I'm not sure but they are doing not not the uh, understanding of the complete specification. Okay. So there also, if you want to get started with the stuff, we also have a public broker running. There are also other public bro brokers from, from Eclipse and from Mosquito uh, itself, I think. And you can, there you can, can test out uh, MQTT without r uh, running your own broker. For example, we have here the la latest topics you can see, which are doing, and also you can o also subscribe and, subscribe and publish clients to do some debugging. Okay, so. Now it's all about the protocol, and now we're coming to the implementation from, uh, from Eclipse, Eclipse Paho. Um, Paho is donated from, from IBM and Eurotech. Um, it's, yeah, it's open source, it's a reference implementation, and it has no, not only, uh, it has very, very 
few lang uh, very uh, many languages available. So it's available for Java, for JavaScript, Lua, C, C++, Go, and uh, Python. It is a very active community where, you pro where the, the implementations are maintained, and it also has a charge of library uh, which uses MQT or WebSockets, which we will see later uh, in action. So then let's uh, let's go into the code. So how can you can you leverage Paho? Um, that's now that's uh, that's an um, the Java, Java implementation, but the, all the other implementations work uh, very similar to it. So uh, I would quickly quickly explain um, the code. If you have any questions, just just uh, yeah, just shout, and I will will uh, explain the stuff more. So first of all, we we have we have to connect to to, the, to our broker. So this is done with the TCP, uh, the TCP uh, open a TCP socket and to look with a host and a port. Um, and then we have a client ID. So client ID is basically for uh, each device should have a unique client ID, which will be identified in the broker uh, when you when it has uh, some persistent sessions available that it will get on the on the reconnect. And then we have also our persistence, uh, which will uh, persistence uh, into the persistence persistence a class, which will uh, is an implementation of the storage of the messages, which cannot be sent to the broker. So if the broker is not at the moment not connected, then it will store the messages on uh, on the client side for, and then will send them if the broker is back online. If the messages are sent with quality of service uh, one or higher. Um, yeah. So then we connect, and then we can publish to uh, a topic, and we will um, send some bytes, and we call it service one, and we set uh, retain as false. <laughs> so if um, if another client connects after our disconnect or af after our publish um, and subscribes to our topic, then it will not get the message because the message is sent once and then not, uh, and if it's not uh, right there subscribed at the time, then it will not get the message. If you set uh, the retain flag to true, it will store the, la the last, the hello message on the my topic one, two, three. And then the next client connects, even if we have disconnected, then we, it will get the, get the message. And then we, this, the, the, the last line of disconnect. So uh, let's see a um, little bit of complicated, a more complicated connect. Um, we, we, I talked about last will and testament and uh, some uh, and, and some other features like the clean session, and here is ho how you can can set this in the code. So you just uh, yeah instantiate the MQT connect connect options. Um, with them you can you can uh, set all these things, all the, the keep alive interval, which uh, then will send the heartbeats to the to the, to the broker. You can set your will message, for example. We use the uh, my status topic and uh, a message offline, mm -hmm. the quality of service two. So in the case uh, the broker, uh, the client goes goes offline, the broker will send this message for the client to the topic. So all other, so if I'm uh, like a client that is uh, responsible for for uh, maintain, maintaining all the statuses of the clients, I will subscribe to my status. Then I will get the message if a client dies. Then no, ah, okay, client, uh, our publisher client is, has died, and then I can do some actions like sending a technical team out to the field to to resolve the issue. Um, yeah, so client the clean session is uh, is false. I, I can specify if the sessions are persistent or not, and the username and password I I can. Uh, do authentication or author authorization mechanisms on the broker, um, which are not part of the protocol, but part of the of the broker. What to do with with these uh, credentials? Okay, so there is also this wa all was was now synchronous. So there is also in Paho uh, asynchronous cl client, which uh, yeah is better performing when you that is only doing something when when it uh, will will get the new. And some some response. So in this case, on success, you can then do the, the publish uh, in there, and on failure, um, do some other stuff, which is like only in the, the same functionality, only in an asynchronous way, that uh, brings you more more performance on your uh, on your client side. 
So, yeah, and also we, we have, now we only have the publisher part, so now here's uh, how you subscribe with the Power uh, API. You have to implement uh, the MQTT, uh, call, MQTT callback. It has uh, three methods, which are connection lost, message arrived, and delivery complete. Delivery complete is uh, interesting for quality of service uh, two, where you can uh, verify if your message got uh, successfully delivered uh, to the broker. And in case of connection, lo connect connection lost, you can also handle some stuff. And the important method is message arrived, where you get um, each message that arrives uh, for your subscription, which um, you subscribe to. So you have to set the callback before connecting. Then you connect to, uh, to your broker, and then you can subscribe to a topic, and the callback will uh, will get all the messages that are coming in. So now it's show time. I will show uh, a quick demo how we can we can uh, use all these stuff. So MQTT, MQTT on a device, and MQTT on web sockets in the browser. So sadly, uh, I don't have uh, like such a great live demo as my two previous speakers. So I just will show this uh, on my computer. Quickly mirror my display, so. Okay, so here I have I have uh, I have two two applications basically. I have uh, one one uh, device simulator, which has my power client. So this is basically this, the same thing I just I just showed you, uh, um, just showed you. And it, it's doing, um, it uses the, um, the last will and testament feature to notice the application if my client is offline, so it will send, uh, you know, yeah, the topic is uh, Eclipse con status. So this is a, a, a demo we, we did as EclipseCon uh, Europe 2013 as a workshop. So if you were there, you could build this, uh, this stuff by yourself. And you can also build it now because we al already have the stuff on GitHub. So you can uh, use the code and uh, try it out yourself. So maybe at first I, I show it what, it what it does and then I will uh, go into more detail if we have, if we have any time. So let's get this thing up and running. Ah, maybe I have, yeah. So first of all, we have to we have to get up uh, MQT broker. So I quickly will start. I will start up uh, hyphen queue. Okay, so it started, and now we can we can start the client. So what what is seeing here is this is a random random uh, data gener generator. It, so it will generate a, a, temp a random temperature, a random uh, weather, weather state, which is a little bit connected to the temperature, but not, not really. And we have a glaze warning wh when there is uh, ice on the street. So this will, will uh, be true under a certain uh, degree. Ah, yeah, I think it's under five degree degrees we have potential uh, glaze, glaze on the streets. So this one is now sending the data to the broker and we can now look because Can you still see this, or is it too, 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 uh, okay. So you can see the messages that are arriving at the broker. So we have there a, a, a message uh, plugin uh, installed in the broker, which uh, outputs every message on the, on the command line, but because in a production scenario, you wouldn't do that, because it's too much, too much uh, load, uh, or too much, uh, it snips out too much performance from the broker, so you wouldn't uh, print out all the messages. But just for demonstration purposes, so now you see uh, we have three topics. We have an uh, eclipse con temperature, eclipse con weather, and eclipse con glaze, where these uh, things are um, um, published with a retained false and quality of service null. Uh, quality of service uh, two. So that was so now uh, it's it's publishing on, on our broker, and now we need the web application part. So which is. 
Jesus, what up, sis? So, maybe I'm... Maybe I just will do this in... in Now in just a minute we should see. Yeah. So what we what we have now here we have uh, uh, we have a temperature uh, um, uh, gauge which shows us the temperature, <coughs> which will update live when we get a new re new value. We also have here a, a weather a graphic which will also update if this changes and uh, well maybe I can I can do it that you can see what's what's going on. So if we send, if there is getting a new message, then it should instantly update. Okay, so it's, it's still storm, so that's why it didn't change. And we have down here that a our control center that is uh, telling us the client is connected, and we can also send uh, messages back to the client. So now I can say, okay, this is too slow because it takes forever to publish a new message. Um, I will do the um, interval more slow, uh, more uh, uh, yeah, shorter interval. And if I just do this, then I, the message would have got to, you can, you can see here that we, um, okay, you can he say, say, see here that the monitoring dashboard has just sent a message to the Eclipse interval topic, which with, with one, and then the, dis the dashboard disconnected again. And not sure why. Why I think we, because it, it reloaded the, the the page, and now you see that this is going uh, in one second intervals that it will send the data. So I, ha I have done here this. I I read the data from from the broker in the web application, and I also can send commands like also uh, Benjamin did with the uh, with the robot here. You can also send commands and also receive uh, stuff from there. And also, what's what's interesting if we just if we would like to, you can see that it's going instantly. So if I if I stop the the client, um, there will be send a retained message, which then will will instantly show that the client is offline. So if I click here, then okay, it has it has uh, recognized that it's offline and now it's it's red. And if also I will um, reload the page, it still knows the client is offline. That's because there is a retained message uh, on this. Topic, and you can see this. You can see this. Ah, yeah, here. You can see this one here because uh, the monitoring dashboard has received uh, the. It has subscribed, new, uh, newly subscribed. Then it has received the value zero. Uh, this is uh, because because the message is retained, and uh, um, uh, therefore, um, if our client is is not um, is not connected at the moment. We also receive the value, but that's really a cool a cool features that we have here with the last will and testament and the ten messages where we can can build um, interesting interesting um, use cases in this area. So yeah, basically, so much uh, for the demo. And I would say thank uh, say grazie for for your attention.